guys, today is going to be one of those videos where I sit down and update you on some things that haven't slotted into other videos that I wanted to tell you about or ask you about or shout out about because I've been enjoying them. In fact, I jolted the table so much apparently I'm quite excited because one of those things is something that everyone has been talking about but I am going to mention it here because I don't think you can talk about it too much and that is S-Town. That is something that I've been loving recently. It's a podcast that's made by the same people who made Serial. Scandal. I hadn't listened to Serial. I have now rectified that. I didn't get into the second season of Serial so much but very much enjoyed the first season. But S-Town, in my opinion, controversial, is even better than Serial. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's a podcast and it's free. You can listen to it on their website and I'll link it down below. And you can also get it on the podcast app on your phone as well if you happen to have that app. So it's difficult to talk about S-Town without spoiling it and it's absolutely something that I don't want to spoil. So I'm just going to have to be very, very vague about it and you're just going to have to dive in. And I swear you will want to listen to all of the episodes back to back, which is exactly what I did because it's amazing. The first minute of the S-Town podcast really gave me a shiver. So I'm going to briefly paraphrase here. The narrator says that if you're repairing an old clock or an old watch, Sometimes you're working on the shadow of imprints left by parts that are no longer there. You don't have the blueprints of the clock when it was made if it was hundreds of years ago. So you are really grasping at straws trying to work backwards to rebuild this clock and work out what went wrong with it. And often you reach dead ends and it can be really, really frustrating. Then the narrator says, anyway, I only know all this because an old clockmaker called John B. Macklemore called me and asked me to help him solve a murder. And it goes from there. So it's real life. It's basically all the phone conversations that Brian has with John and other people. And it really morphs into some kind of character study. And it's just, it, I cried several times listening to it. I just found it so moving and fantastic. So yeah, I think that's enough rambling about that. If you haven't watched it, you should definitely go and check that one out. What else is on my list? Um, Mr. M and I went to the lakes for a week, which was really, really nice. I was very good and didn't do much work at all. And we just went for lots of walks. And there was still a lot of snow left on the tops of the mountains, which we were kind of surprised by, like up to three feet in places. So you had to be really careful, otherwise you would basically just fall up to your waist. Um, so that was really relaxing. If you can call mountain climbing relaxing. It was mentally relaxing, there we go. It was mentally relaxing. Um, and over the Easter weekend, we went up to visit my family in the Northeast, which was also very nice. Went for walks along the beach in the dark, which is one of my favorite things to do. Um, my pals and I sometimes would go and have nighttime picnics on the beach when we were younger, which was something that I really, really enjoyed. We'd light little tea lights around the edges of a picnic blanket um, and just hang out and it would be very, very lovely. And one of those friends who used to come to the beach with me in the dark is my best friend, Dan, and we've known each other since we were four. Um, and something that I've really been enjoying recently is helping him plan his wedding. Now, I use that term loosely because planning a wedding is a huge headache and I happily leave that headache with him. But the thing that I've been specifically helping him with is the actual ceremony because I'm actually going to be marrying him and his future husband. And I'm so excited about it and honoured and it's unlike anything that I've had to think about writing before um, because some of the parts of the ceremony they don't want to know about um, until the actual day so they want to be surprised so it's something I'm really having to think about and in a slightly different way to anything that I've approached before. Other things that I have been doing recently, uh, let's look at my list, um, lots of exciting things for Franklin's, uh, uh, Franklin? Franklin, Franklin, his name is Franklin. Lots of exciting things for Franklin's Flying Bookshop, which is coming out at the beginning of September and the beginning of the world in the middle of the night, which is coming out in November. It's gonna be a very, very busy second half of the year. I'm trying not to think about it too much because I dance between being very, very excited and panicking a lot, but it's gonna be fine. It's all going to be fine. Um, I have some things to show you with regard to those books soon, which I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Um, and other videos that you can expect to be coming up soon. I'm working with the Bailey's Prize, as I mentioned, I think in the last video. Um, so I'll be reviewing all of the shortlisted books and talking to you about them. I'm also doing some volunteer work for a charity called Changing Faces. They have an awareness day at the end of May called Face Equality. Um, and this is gonna link in with the videos that I've been doing um, on disfigurement and disability and representation in the media. Um, those videos weren't geared towards 
me doing work with them, this is something that happened independently. Um, but I'm going to take that discussion further to interview people in that charity about how they feel they have seen themselves represented in the media or how they feel they haven't been represented in the media, which I'm sure is more likely the case. Um, and I'm going to be recording those interviews over the next few weeks and then that video will be going up at the end of May. So I really hope that that's something you guys enjoy. I also wanted to mention that I've just put all of my summer writing workshops online, so I'll leave details of those in the description box down below they are online so you can take part wherever you happen to be in the world I run group workshops three times a year and then individual workshops year-round via email one-on-one -on -one. there are benefits to both of these group workshops means that um, you get to see other people's writing and the feedback that I give to other people which I think in turn helps you um, see how you might improve your own work in a different way on the other hand individual workshops the benefit of that means that you can take part at any time during the year. So if you would like to know more, all of the details are in the description box down below. There are two summer writing workshops. One's on poetry and structure. So looking at how you can best structure free verse. So thinking about the actual shape of a poem and how you can best shape that to reflect the subject matter of what you're writing about. Also looking at line breaks and how you can create double meanings with line breaks. And then in the short story workshop, it's called the art of the short story. And we're gonna be looking at art and photographs and using those as inspiration for writing short stories but yes all of the details are in the description box down below and as I make this video there is still a few places left. The paperback of The Tidal Zone by Sarah Moss is coming out this week and Granta sent it to me in the post so I wanted to mention it here but they didn't just send me the paperback which was one of my favourite books of last year and I'll link the review that I did up here and down below. They also sent me this amazing t-shirt. Are you ready? I don't think you are ready because the patriarchy is not going to fuck itself, which is a quote from the book. And I'm so happy to have this on a t-shirt. I'm very happy indeed. Something that I've also been loving are these cookbooks here. They're very, very heavy. They are by Anna Jones, and it's a modern way to cook and a modern way to eat. And I thought I would mention them. I first, I think I'd seen her around, but then I really paid attention to her book after I saw a video that Rosianna put up on her channel where she, spent a month making a recipe from the book every evening and filmed like a montage where she was talking over the top and it was just really soothing and really relaxing and the food looked super yummy. So Mr M and I decided to pick it up and as you can see we've got lots of tabs in this one um, and I'll show you some of my favourites, I'll zoom in on some now, but these are so so good, like really really good vegetarian cookbooks. In fact a lot of these um, recipes in here are, are vegan or at least you could easily make them vegan. So if you're looking for a new cookbook I would highly recommend these. I'm going to link them in the description box. Before I go, I wanted to say that I'm going to be filming a Q&A very soon. So if you have any questions on writing, on reading, on the publishing industry, on life, on disfigurement, on whatever, you can leave them in the comment section down below or drop me a tweet. If you prefer to be anonymous, you can email me. My email address is in the video description down below. And finally, the last thing that I wanted to mention is that I've got two events coming up at the beginning of May, which I thought I would tell you about in case you happen to be in the area and you'd like to come along. The first one is in Leeds, um, and this is at Leeds University. So you do have to be a Leeds University student. So if you happen to be one of those, um, I'm giving a talk with the DAS and English literature students about the history of fairy tales and otherness in storytelling and then I've got an event at um, the Newcastle Poetry Festival which is on poetry in the media so I'll leave information on those events in the description box down below as well. So I think that's everything that I wanted to talk to you about today, a little update video. I would love to know how you are, what you've been up to. Please let me know in the comments section down below. Let's have a chat. I'll speak to you guys very very soon. Lots of bookish love. Bye!